Alright. You've seen my new intro video. Nice isn't it? In the latter part of this video, I will show you how I created it by just using PowerPoint along with its stock 3D models and advanced morph transition. First, let me show you how the normal morph transition in PowerPoint works. So I've created a slide with a circle shape here. Then I duplicated that slide, making sure that the shape name is the same on the second slide, then I'll be resizing and repositioning the circle shape, which will be the animation for the morph transition. Now, while the focus is on the second slide, I will go to the transition ribbon tab, and then select the morph transition. There we go. You can see the smaller circle in the left, from slide 1, slowly morph into a bigger circle in the right, which is the second slide. All well and good. But how about, if we want to morph the circle from slide 1, into a different shape in slide 2. Let's try that and see. We will have this. No morph has happened. It's actually just like a fade transition, since the object in slide 1 is not the same object in slide 2 anymore. This is where the advanced morph comes in. We can force these two different objects to be recognized by PowerPoint as the same one. Let's go to slide 1, then select the circle shape first. Then open the shape format ribbon tab. Then click the selection pane. This will open the selection pane window in the right side, where you can see all the objects within the current slide. Since we only have one object in the slide, which is the circle shape, we also have only one item in the list. We should then click on that item, and we will need to rename the object. Now, this is very important. Make sure that the name starts with two exclamation signs. The advance morph will not work if you do not put two exclamation signs here. Then follow it with any name that you want. Let's say shape 1. Let's copy this name that we've assigned here. Then let's go to the second slide and click the square shape and also rename this object. And we will give this shape with the same exact name as the circle. Now, the circle in slide 1 and this square in slide 2 will be recognized by PowerPoint as the same objects. And when we do the morph transition now. There we go. A nice smooth animation from circle to square. Aside from shapes, we can also do this on a text. Let me add a text box here in slide 1. Let's leave it as a black font with a normal size. Then let's rename this object, let's put two exclamation points, and then any name, let's say text box 1. Let's copy the text box itself. Then paste it to the second slide. Since we just copied this from slide 1, it will have the same name, so no need to rename it. Let's make it a red font. And maybe make it bigger to be in two lines. When we preview the morph transition. There we go. A nice animation from a smaller one-line black text into a bigger red font, two-liners. Nice. Let's now try to do a morph for a picture. Did you know that when you go to the insert ribbon tab, then expand the picture ribbon, and click on line picture, you will be able to select and insert a picture in your slide for free. There's a lot of free pictures to choose from here. Let's try this Air France airplane. There's a text box that comes with it. Let's remove that. Let's set the airplane to be at the bottom right side of the slide 1. As usual, let's set its name to have two exclamation point and name it picture 1. Now let's copy the object and then paste it to slide 2. It will be copied with the same name, as usual. Let's now put it at the top left side of slide 2, and make it a little smaller, to give an effect that it is flying. Focus on the airplane as we preview the morph transition. There we go. It really did look like it's flying. Now let's do one more morph sample, and this is my favorite. From the insert ribbon tab, you can expand the 3D models, and choose stock 3D model. This will bring up a lot of free 3D models that you can choose and insert to your slide. We have a lot of categories here. Let's try electronics and gadgets. Let's try this laptop here. Then click insert. Oops. I accidentally inserted two. Let me delete the other one. Okay. For 3D model objects, you will have this atom looking icon here. When you click and drag that, it will enable you to rotate the 3D model. Cool. Let's position this laptop here at the bottom left corner. Then let's copy it and paste it to the second slide. Now let's rotate the laptop facing the other side. Let's make it bigger, and let's try to position it inside the square shape, for additional dramatic effect. Now let's preview the morph transition. Keep your attention to the laptop. There we go. A really cool looking transition. That's why 3D objects are my favorite objects to use on advanced morph. It makes the animation looks like it's done on a professional high-end video editor software. Really cool. Okay. It's time to show you how I created my new introduction video. I already laid out all the objects that I needed here. A text box which is outside the slide, since I don't want to show it at the first slide. There's also two pictures here for the Ribby Trivia logo. And of course I have already set up all their names with a double exclamation point prefix. I have a blue rectangle shape here, also outside the slide. And four 3D objects here, which I'll use to highlight reviews, tips, and tricks later. 
Since all objects are here in slide 1, I will just need to duplicate the slide, so that all the objects I have set up will be carried over to the new second slide, including the object names. Let's just set the slide 2 transition to morph. Now, we simply just need to move over the objects on what position you want for slide 2. I want to highlight reviews for this slide, so I am taking out all the 3D models, except the chest box, which is my icon for reviews, as in unboxing. Then I will take the shape inside the slide, which will serve as a shade to highlight the review section, along with the chest box 3D model. And I'll place the Ribby Trivia logo to the unshaded area. Let's rotate the 3D model to face the other side, so that we will be a great animation for its morph. Make the Ribby Trivia logo a bit smaller. Then put the label review below the chest box. We have more space, so let's make the text bigger. Let's try to preview the morph. That's nice. Now let's duplicate slide 2 to create slide 3. Then, same concept, just rearrange all the objects as needed. In a video editing language, think of each slide here as your keyframe. So basically, when in morph transition, an animation will be automatically created to move from the previous slide's object states, to the next slide's object states. One slide is just one keyframe. So for this slide 3, I am highlighting the tips, with the gear 3D model as the image. Then shifting the blue shade to the other side. There we go. Now duplicate again slide 3 to be slide 4, and rearrange the objects again as needed. Now highlighting tricks, with the bunny and the hat 3D objects as its image companion. Then for the last slide, we will just go back to the first state to make a perfect loop. So I will just be copying slide 1 to be slide 5. Then add a morph transition for it. Let's now select all the slides in the left pane. Then on the advanced slide ribbon group, let's check after, and uncheck on mouse click. Let's set the after to 1.5 seconds. This will make sure that the slides will automatically move to the next without the need of human intervention. Let's click apply to all so that all slides will move to the next after 1.5 seconds. Let's now run the slide show. There's the reviews with the chest box. The tips with the gears. Tricks with the bunny on a hat. And back to the original state. That looks very professional and cool. Alright. Let's save the slides. Now, you can readily create an animated GIF file out of this. You can go to File, then Save As, then Browse. From the Save As Type drop-down, you should be able to see an animated GIF type here. Unfortunately, I only have an Office Home version here, so I don't have that option. If you have a higher MS Office version than Home Edition, that option should be available to you. What I can only do here is go to Export, then Create a Video. You can select the resolution here which can be up to 4K. But I'm good for 1080 for now. Let's create a video. Then save. You will then see the progress here at the status bar below. This 12 second video took 22 seconds to generate. It's usually faster than that, but these slides have a lot of objects, including 3D models, so it's understandable. Okay. Let's open the video. There we go. Looks great. I just edited this to make it faster, and also added some swoosh sound effect, and that's what you saw in the intro of this video. Alright. I hope this helps, and that you learned something new today. If you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. If it has helped you in any way, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Nilasuj for watching. Nobody air.